So this is the um, free response question number one from the 2011 uh, macro exam. Pause to read and try it, and then you can watch the video afterwards for my solution. OK, so um, we needed to draw a Phillips curve in the first part of question one, the unemployment rate in percent goes on the x-axis, the inflation rate in percentage terms on the y-axis. Uh, the long run Phillips curve is a vertical line, perfectly inelastic at whatever um, the, the NARU or natural rate of unemployment happens to be. Short run Phillips curve, there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. So it's downward sloping like this. And the last part of A uh, wanted us to put um, a point labeled A uh, that could represent the current state of uh, this U.S. economy in recession. So since unemployment gets uh, larger as we go to the left, um, it means that uh, the rate of unemployment during a recession would be higher than Nehru. So point A has to be anywhere, somewhere uh, on the short-run Phillips curve, but to the left of um, the long-run Phillips curve and Nehru. Uh, part B wanted us to use um, the aggregate supply, aggregate demand for the U.S., um, draw the graph to represent uh, the economy um, with uh, a recession or a recessionary gap. So uh, I've set up the axes with real GDP on the X, price level on the Y. I'm going to draw in my long-run aggregate supply first, again, just to perfectly um, vertical or inelastic, and um, we're supposed to label that um, potential output as YF. <clears throat> so here's YF. Uh, remember that, again, potential output is, is associated with uh, Nehru. Now all we need to do is um, show a short run um, equilibrium recessionary gap. So uh, we're going to put our short run aggregate supply curve here and aggregate demand here. And uh, they intersect with each other to the left of our potential output YF. And that, I think we're used YE to represent that output and PLE for that uh, short run price level. Because YE is less than YF, um, we are representing a, a, um, a recessionary gap. For Part C, um, it said that the federal government wants to balance its budget so it raises income taxes and keeps uh, government expenditures or spending uh, the same. So on the graph that we just drew here, uh, we're supposed to show the effect of the increase in taxes and label our new equilibrium output and price levels Y2, PL2. So um, if we keep uh, government expenditures G the same, but we increase uh, taxes, consumption will fall. Uh, households will have less uh, disposable income. There's no government expenditures to offset their uh, decrease in spending. So aggregate demand will decrease along with the decrease in those expenditures. And so our new short-run equilibrium um, is going to be further to the left at PL2 and Y2. For Part D, um, before we get to the graph, they tell us that the Federal Reserve is going to use monetary policy to stimulate the economy, and uh, they want to know first uh, what open market policy would the Federal Reserve implement if, uh, again, <coughs> we want to um, stimulate the economy. That would be an expansionary monetary policy. We would want to increase uh, bank reserves, follow the money. Um, when the Fed buys bonds, makes an open market purchase, Banks end up with more reserves, which then 
excess reserves which they can loan out um, and expand the money supply. So the correct answer would be uh, in order to accomplish an expansionary uh, policy here uh, to stimulate the economy, we would want to buy bonds or have an open market um, purchase. Um, then they want us to, to turn our attention to the money market graph. I've already set up the uh, axes here. Quantity of money is on the X. Uh, nominal interest rate is on the Y. Um, and uh, we want to show the effect of the policy that we just uh, undertook. So first of all, we have to have the original uh, supply of money and um, the demand for money. Uh, looks like that. Um, we call this uh, quantity Q1, and we've got our original uh, equilibrium uh, nominal interest rate at R1. Um, as we said, we expanded the money supply, so that means supply of money shifts to the right. So this would be our new supply S2, the new quantity S2 and our new um, lower nominal interest rate um, that results from uh, this uh, increase in the money supply. The last uh, part of the question um, asks what this uh, change in nominal interest rates will do um, to the price level. So we have to connect um, the interest rate change back to ASAD and if you remember when interest rates change, um, they're going to affect investment primarily and uh, to a lesser degree um, interest rate sensitive uh, consumer spending. So um, lower interest rates would cause uh, the demand for planned investment to increase because investment is a part of aggregate demand. Aggregate demand would increase or shift to the right and anytime aggregate demand uh, shifts to the right we get a new um, equilibrium with a higher uh, price level uh, at a larger uh, output as measured by real GDP. Okay, so it wasn't required, um, but I went ahead and, and um, drew the uh, ASAD graph to show a recessionary gap here to better explain uh, why the answer would be the way that it is here. Um, Again, if the government and the Federal Reserve didn't take any action, then we're, going, we're basically allowing the economy to self-correct uh, over time for uh, this recessionary gap at Y1. It would move us back to YP. Um, in order for that to happen, um, the short-run aggregate supply curve is going to have to increase and shift to the right uh, to close the gap. Um, that happens um, because the unemployment uh, at Y1 uh, leads to uh, eventually a, a decrease in wages and since the, the price of inputs and labor uh, and their wages are, happen to be the most significant usually of those uh, costs, when they fall um, that's a positive change uh, represented by a rightward shift of short run aggregate supply. So in the long run, our short-run aggregate supply would increase um, in order to close the gap. And um, in the long run, um, they ask uh, if anything would happen to our natural rate of unemployment, the, the Nehru. Um, and of course, the, the answer would be that no, uh, there is not um, anything described here that would affect or cause the uh, Nehru to uh, change. Um, it only changes with, um, you know, government policy, structural changes, richer um, uh, unemployment benefits, you know, uh, crazy laws um, like France has against how many hours a week you can work and the number of uh, weeks of vacation that you're required to take and things like that. So none of that was described here, so uh, the natural rate or the Nehru level um, is left uh, unchanged. And that's all.